Hi guys, and welcome to this video on scheduling problems almost at the end of networks. My name is Darren Matsuguru, really good to see you. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel, click like. Apparently, it's all the likes that make a difference. And if you can, tell your mates about the channel. Nobody watches maths videos. Do they watch maths videos? I don't think. Oh, you're watching a maths video. I'm not calling you a nobody. I am so sorry. Anyway, what are we dealing with today? Scheduling problems. Part of the network section of the Further Maths course. If you don't know what Further Maths is, don't worry about it. This is an interesting video. Watch it nonetheless. All right, what are we doing? We're understanding what scheduling is and why it's important, and it's building on all that network stuff you've already done. Understand what a weighted precedence table is. Hold on a moment. We've seen the word weight before. Understand what a float time is. Uh, know how to calculate early start times, latest start times, and critical paths. Critical paths are so, so important. Why? Because the next video, they're going to make so, so much difference. If you understand what a critical path is, you're going to be able to crash, not a car. Please don't crash your car. Don't crash your shopping cart. <laughs> don't. Just don't crash anything, yeah? Know how to identify things. Right, so past learning. There is so much to recap. All I can say is, if you haven't already done so, watch the videos on mathsguru.com. They are all there. And up until now, if I'm honest with you, I think the work's been fairly simple. It's stuff you can put in your summary book and just regurgitate. You know, what's a Hamiltonian network? What's a, a, an Eulerian path? What's a circuits? And all those type of things is fine. Being able to draw activity networks and presence tables, all right, that might have got a little bit more tricky, but that was just joining lines together. It was coloring in. Now we're going to use it in some real world applications, things that maths actually gets used for. I know, go figure. All those people doing methods, what are they doing at the moment? They're struggling with algebra with no real idea what they're doing. And yet you're doing further maths, changing the world. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Precedence tables again. Now, in this situation here, there is a precedence table. It's a list of things to do. Yes, but it's a fairly pointless idea at this moment because it doesn't, it tells me that I can't start C until A is finished. All right, I can do A and B at the same time. F can only start when C and D are finished and blah, 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 which is pretty much what the uh, presence table is telling me. But how long do any of these take? All right, if I'm making a cup of tea, does it take equally as long to boil the kettle as it does to take sugar in the cup? No. Well, I'd hope not, unless you're putting a grain of like sugar in at each time. Get a grip. So, let's actually now add some weights. <clears throat> and I don't mean dumbbells. I'm talking about how long each of these activities take to do. All right, so here's an example of an activity network and a precedence table with weights on it. Because now what we can tell is that activity A has an estimated completion time of eight days. Okay, that makes sense. This is not making a cup of tea, by the way. This might be building a house. Probably not building a house. What could take eight days? No idea. Let's work out. Because actually, do you know how long it's going to take to do this whole project? No, not at this moment in time. You might have an idea because you might want to walk around the dummy network and go, oh. But we know for B, it takes six days. For C, it takes one day. So turning an activity or a presence table into an activity network is really, really important. But what do we do now? How long is it gonna take me to go from the start to the finish? For those of you who want to do this by hand, trust me, it gets complicated. This one's not very difficult. If we look at how we can get from the start to finish, there are a number of different paths we could take. We could go up here, along here, down here, and along there, all right? Now that is a path through my network. We've got to remember that while that thinks we're only going to do A, C, E, G, and H, that's not what we're doing. We're looking for the time it would take to go through that part of my network. And if we added those numbers together, what would we get? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right? So that would be 15 days to go that way. Is that the best way of doing it? Is that the only way of doing it? No. Because we could equally go through here. And in that situation, we would have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So going that way would be 12 days. Oh, well, we'll do that then, yes? No, it just actually means that we could complete it in 12, but not, because this yellow path is still gonna take 15 days to do. So it doesn't matter if I can get from the start here to the finish there, and I'll be a bit more specific about that in a moment, in a quicker time, it's irrelevant, because I've still got to go through A, 
C and E in a certain amount of time. Okay, and for those of you who are looking, yes, you could also go A to C down the dummy along F and through G and H. So there are three ways through that. Now, again, this isn't the easier one to do. But what I want to ask is this. The critical part of this diagram is actually the length of time it takes between here and here. Why? Because that is the one that we have three different options to go through. So we are looking for the path there that is going to take the longest. That is what's going to fall on my critical path. Now again, if you haven't understood that, don't worry about it. I'm about to show you how to do this. The question is, how do you find all the paths through? Do you have to lift them all? Nope. There is another way of doing it. And it's another algorithm. So those of you who did the Dijkstra's algorithm video, you will know that actually you just follow a process. All right. I'm going to do this slightly different from the Cambridge textbook. They put their... Um, squares or whatever we're about to draw, they do them on the vertices. I don't. I put them on the edges. Why? Uh, very good question. I think at the moment I've done it on the dots or the vertices for years and years and years, but uh, a colleague of mine showed me to put them on the edges and it sort of makes a little bit more sense. It makes life easier to find float times and I'll explain what that means in a moment. Now, if your teacher or someone else has taught you another way, go for it. Knock yourself out. No difference. So when you do these things, you basically need to put a rectangle above each of the activities you are completing. So what you notice is I put one above A, one above C, one above below B, one below D. Don't worry about the dummy for the moment. One above E, one by F, one by G, one by H, and then one at the finish. All right, and I'll explain to you the finish in a moment. Now, first things first, we scan, and it's called scanning, through the diagram from left to right. And that's going to find the earliest start times of each of my projects, earliest start times. So when we scan that way, we are looking for the earliest start times. And in that situation, we choose the largest of any possible choices. Again, explain that in a moment. No, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Masquerade.com. Yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there. It's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think. It is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.